Mental Health Commission of Canada, Commission de la santé mentale du Canada. My name is Ed Mantler and I'm the Vice President of Programs and Priorities with the Mental Health Commission of Canada. The Roots of Hope project brings together a coalition of people within a community to work within the structure of the model and to look at promising and best practices from all over the place to design an implementation plan that's bespoke to their community. So looking at the strengths of their community, looking at the opportunities or the gaps that can be filled in. So it's not a cookie cutter approach. Every community develops a plan that's specific to meeting their needs. And so First Nations and Inuit communities that are participating in Roots of Hope have a model, have a plan that's really specific to the needs of their community. So it's really responsive to the local needs and it's really engaging local people to take ownership of promoting life in their community. The MHCC has been so proud to be able to really develop this model, this Made in Canada approach based on experiences around the world and to inspire eight communities across the country to come in um, to put their energy, their commitment, their resources towards developing their implementation plan, actually putting that plan in place and working with us on the national research initiative to truly evaluate this model. I'm Brian Mishara. I'm a psychology professor at the Université du Québec à Montréal and director of the Center for Research and Intervention on Suicide, Ethical Issues, and End-of-Life Practices. Uh, my role in Roots of Hope is principal investigator for the research. All the Roots of Hope sites provided training. Usually, there were all different types of training. There was programs training physicians to ask about suicide directly and assess suicide risk in people who are coming in for uh, somatic problems, uh, uh, symptoms, uh, upset stomachs and other things like that, where these uh, might be a symptom which was uh, associated with their suicidal thoughts and, uh, and getting help from a doctor uh, and sort of feeling out uh, what help is available. Je m'appelle Céline Fortin, je suis coordonnatrice du projet Enraciner le sport pour le comté euh, Madawaska Victoria dans le nord du Nouveau-Brunswick. À l'intérieur du projet, nous avons collaboré avec des partenaires très importants qui sont très précieux pour nous, dont euh, les municipalités. Euh, on a aussi eu des partenaires avec les naturellement avec les professionnels de la santé, les gens en communauté aussi qui ont très bien répondu à nos activités. One of the key factors in Roots of Hope that leads to its success is the continued involvement of various community stakeholders, people with lived experience, and really an attempt to have all the uh, pertinent community members participate in both the planning of what activities would be implemented as part of Roots of Hope, and also have a role of continually providing feedback about whether or not they're on the right track, what needs to be modified or adjusted, and how people think about it and how it seems to be working. I think one of the biggest successes has been actually bringing these communities together. So they're not working in isolation, they each have you know, their own unique plan that's specific to their community, yet they can learn from one another and they exchange ideas and actually keep each other motivated. And, you know, that community of practice will endure long after the Roots of Hope demonstration project is complete. And in fact, that community of practice is already growing. My name is Ryan Murphy. I am the manager of prevention and promotion initiatives with the Mental Health Commission of Canada. 
One of the biggest challenges that we faced certainly was COVID-19. We uh, really, really, really feel that it's important to go and meet communities a number of times a year. And that was something that we weren't able to do. And um, it certainly had an impact uh, in terms of being able to meet communities when they're just starting out on their journey. However, we did find ways to adapt this to virtual environments. And we did um, smaller focus group sessions so that they felt a little bit more intimate and um, found ways that we could connect virtually and more often than we would have um, otherwise. I'm Brittany Howell, and I'm the Research Coordinator in Roots of Hope Buren Peninsula, which would be in Newfoundland and Labrador. It's been a challenging time, but I do think that Roots of Hope, the support from the community, has helped to kind of create, um, just to help create hope in a way to get us through it. So throughout all of this, we've had monthly meetings with the entire national group, and it's been very helpful because Whenever we have challenges, we could bring them up and we could lean on each other for support. My name is Alyssa Brewer Singh. I am the Executive Director for the Waterloo Region Suicide Prevention Council, and my role within Roots of Hope is the project lead for the Waterloo Region side of the Waterloo Wellington project. And I'm Cecilia Marie Roberts, and I'm the Manager of Community uh, Suicide Prevention Projects for the Canadian Mental Health Association of Waterloo Wellington. And I'm the Implementation Coordinator for the Wellington side of Waterloo Wellington. <laughs> You know, COVID really impacted our ability to do the work because we were impacted in what we were actually able to do. You know, we certainly had calls to continue the work of suicide prevention within the community, but it shifted our lens, it shifted our ability to do the work. Yes, COVID was probably our biggest challenge over the last couple of years, but it also created some opportunities, right? So programming that was not virtual before became virtual. And, you know, that's something that we'll, we will continue moving forward. And I think that that's probably, you know, the bright spot in this whole thing. And we were also challenged to kind of do things a little different. I know in Wellington, you know, we launched postcards campaigns. I started a podcast. Is just something that I don't think we ever would have done if we weren't looking for creative ways to talk and engage the community. So. Yeah, which was so important, right, to keep doing that work and just uh, take a bit of a different approach. In rural communities, sometimes there's thoughts that you have to be more silent about suicide and it's something that you don't talk about. And there's the myth that if you talk about suicide, that it will incite other people to do it. Um, but that's not true at all. And that's something that we really try to show in our workshops and our conversations that it's important to talk about suicide. My name is Danika Ward. I am uh, the Community Suicide Prevention Coordinator with the Roots of Hope Project on the Buren Peninsula. We really had to get the conversation going. We had to continue the conversation, find champions within the community, and there, through all of those means, we were able to break down some of the stigma that surrounds suicide. Je m'appelle Dr. Jbilou, je suis médecin spécialiste en santé publique et je suis chercheur et professeur au Centre de formation médicale du Nouveau-Brunswick et à l'Université de Moncton à l'École de psychologie. Il y avait un défi aussi très intéressant, mais en fait c'est un défi qu'on a décidé de relever depuis le début du projet, c'est de travailler avec les hommes d'âge mûr. Alors c'est une population qui n'est pas accessible, facilement accessible, c'est une population qui n'embarque pas forcément dans les services de santé mentale ou même la recherche en santé mentale. Et donc ce défi a été un, un peu quelque chose qui nous a accompagnés tout le long, mais ça ne nous a pas découragés, au contraire, ça nous a motivés. On a été chercher dans la littérature, on, on a vraiment regardé absolument tout, comment concevoir les interventions, comment même le langage, on a, on a changer notre langage pour qu'il soit plus acceptable, plus attractif pour cette population qu'on veut cibler. Et on a ré, euh, réorganisé ou réévalué nos approches. Au lieu d'attendre que ce soit ces hommes-là qui viennent nous voir, nous, on est parti chez eux. Donc on est parti dans la communauté, on est parti dans les milieux de travail où il y a une prédominance masculine. 
on s'est gardé une flexibilité de travail et au fur et à mesure qu'on mettait en place des interventions, on les ajustait, on s'ajustait au milieu, on s'ajustait aussi à la science. Il faut toujours avoir cette capacité d'adaptation, donc c'est absolument ce qu'on a fait dans le cadre du projet. Some of our preliminary conclusions are that there was significant increases in public awareness and decreased stigma in many of the uh, populations who were impacted by Roots of Hope. Uh, that uh, Roots of Hope successfully created a dedicated place for people implementing the programs across Canada in different sites to meet and exchange knowledge and ideas. This interconnection accelerated the use of uh, research and innovation in establishing new suicide prevention programs. My name is Wesley, and I'm a suicide prevention advocate. The project has helped me feel like I have something to give to society. It's helped me give back and turn my own lived experience of suicide into something meaningful. Um, it's made me feel like I can help the people around me and do something unique and interesting that will have a lasting effect on my community. My name is Nedika Ruvari. Uh, I am the director in the area of prevention and promotion initiatives, where we focus heavily on suicide prevention and life promotion at the Mental Health Commission of Canada. I think the biggest impacts from our perspective has been just the conversations that the Roots of Hope has sparked across the country. Uh, the ability um, for uh, several communities to come together and have conversations on a daily basis or um, to, around what one community out in Saskatchewan might be doing and having a conversation with another in Ontario has been really magical to see. And I think uh, more than anything, it's creating conversations that are coast to coast to coast, as well as a shared understanding of what a model and a framework around suicide prevention and life promotion could look like and a common language that's getting developed throughout the country for a bigger and better impact. Research and clinical experience indicate that talking about suicide in a non-biased, open manner and allowing the space for someone to talk about suicide uh, is one of the most helpful things one can do in preventing suicide. Uh, communicating that uh, I'm willing to talk to you about what's really going on, even if you're thinking of killing yourself, is often best achieved by simply asking a question, are you thinking of killing yourself? Uh, the, uh, no one ever says, oh my goodness, no, but thanks for suggesting it. It, it never happens. People uh, uh, understand this as an invitation to talk about something which is troubling them. Uh, and uh, an openness on your part to engage with them, even though they are considering suicide, which is something they might be hesitant to share uh, with someone else because they're afraid of your reaction. Je dirais que c'est tous ensemble qu'on peut faire une différence en termes de prévention de suicide. Et plus qu'il va y avoir de communautés qui s'implique dans ce type de projet-là et plus que de connexion qui se fait à euh, au niveau des partenaires, au niveau des municipalités, au niveau des leaders po politiques, c'est qu'est-ce qui va faire la, la réussite de ce projet-là. Enraciner l'espoir, ce n'est que le début. On commence le travail qui est fait, puis qu'on qu a créé, qu'on a innové, puis on espère pouvoir euh, voir nos initiatives aussi euh, se répandre euh, à travers le Canada, de, de, que, que d'autres communautés adhèrent à nos initiatives aussi, puis le reste du Nouveau-Brunswick également.
Mental Health Commission of Canada, Commission de la santé mentale du Canada, mentalhealthcommission.ca.